In this BricksForge Proofforms tutorial, you will master how to do calculations as well as use the conditional logic. Let's see some examples. The first example we'll be looking at was a question by a member of the BricksForge community and he was asking about an event pricing calculator with three conditions. First, the base price per participant should be $100. Then, if there are fewer than 50 participants, it should add a surcharge of $1,000. But if there are 50 or more participants, then there should be no surcharge. It should just be at the base price. So here we have the example. At the moment, the minimum is one participant. So one multiplied by 100 should give us $100. But since it's less than 50 participants, we get a surcharge of $1,000. And in total, we get $1,100. If I make it 15, that would then be 15 multiplied by 100, which gives us $1,500. But since 15 is less than 50, we get the surcharge of 1000 And in total, we have to pay $2,500. But watch what happens the moment we get to 50. Let's say 49. We still get our surcharge. But the moment we get to 50, we get the discount applied and now it's just 50 multiplied by 100 which gives us $5,000. The second example takes it a step further and adds a bit more conditions and calculations. Let's take a look. The second example is for a car wash service with three inputs. The first one is for the vehicle type, then want to add some main services or some premium add-ons. Watch what happens to the total at the bottom. So at the moment we have the vehicle type, nothing is selected. That's why it is zero pounds. But now let's choose a type of car and we say, okay, we want maybe the sedan. It gives us a base price of 25 pounds. If we choose the SUV, we get 30 pounds and so on. So truck, 35 pounds. Let's go back to the SUV. Now let's say we want to add some add-ons. Say we want interior cleaning. That will now be 30 plus the 15 pounds. If you want, let's maybe skip the second one and say we want just polish treatment. It will now become 75 pounds. Or if we want just wax treatment, we get 65 pounds. If you want all of them, you get 95 pounds and so on. Then this is where the interesting bit comes in. So let me first deactivate all of this so you can see the example in action. So now we have the base price of 30 pounds. Then we want to add, let's say, the paint protection. Then let's say we want to add the wheel polish and we want to add maybe the air freshener and see what happens immediately. So now let's try and calculate it ourselves. This is 40 plus 20, that's 60 pounds, plus 5 pounds, that's 65 pounds. And it says that we get a saving of 10% if we choose three or more items. So 10% of 65 gives us 6.5 pounds. And then all of these values, so that is 65 minus 6.5 will give us 58.5. Then we add the base price of 30 pounds. That goes up to a total of 88.5 pounds. So now let's go ahead and see how all of this works out. And as a bonus, at the end, I will also look at the accessibility as well and how to make some of these fields to be accessible so that a screen reader can get the announcement of all of these fields. So if that's something that interests you, let's keep going. So we'll start with the first example. I'll show you how to quickly set it up and how to use the calculation fields. So let's jump right in. To follow along with this tutorial, make sure you have Bricks and BricksForge. If you haven't installed them already, I'll leave a link to where you can download them in the description so you can go ahead and check them out and download them. Make sure you're using the latest version so that everything works out just smoothly. So for this example, let me go ahead and show you the versions I'm working with, but it doesn't matter what the version you're working with, you should still be able to follow along 
with these principles. So now let's jump into the builder and take a look. For this example, I'm using Bricksforge version 2.2.5 and I also added ACPT version 2.0.16 just to show you that you can also use dynamic data in your pro forms, but those are not needed. The only thing you need is the Bricksforge and Bricks. So let's continue. After installing Bricksforge, head over to Bricks, then Bricksforge, and then head over to Elements, and make sure you have ProForms active. Once you have those, then we're good to go. So now I'm just going to head over back into the page and we'll continue from there. For the first example, this is what we're working with. Now, the first thing you need to do is go ahead and add a section. So come to the plus icon to add elements and then I'll choose layout section. That will add the section and the container together. Within the container, let me now go ahead and add my pro form. So I'll search for pro forms and I click on that. It creates the pro forms for me with some default values. If you need all of these default values, you can keep them. But for this example, all I'm just really working with is just this number of fields. So that's a number field and some set of hidden fields. So I'll go ahead and delete every field here. But you would add them into your own form as you need because maybe you want to send the form to your users. Then you need to have their name and some important information. This is focusing on the calculations. So I'll leave the submit button for now. So within the form, so I'm in the pro forms. Now I can go to the plus sign again. And what I need here is one field for the user to impute the number of participants that they are expecting. So that is the number field. Then we need a field to tell us what the unit price is. You don't really need a field. You can do that all in one calculation, but I just want to separate it out to show you that you can actually separate them out as well. So we get one field for the unit price, one field for the surcharge and the minimum number of participants. So let's go ahead. So it starts with, if you can go down and search for it, you see the Bricks Forge forms, and that's where you have all of the inputs you can use within the pro form. So I'll start with the number field. Let me make sure it is the top. Then we'll come back and I may just as well search for the fields. The next one I need is the hidden field. So I'll need like four or three hidden fields for each of these values. Then I would need one more field for the calculation. So that will be called if you search for calculation. So those are the fields. Now I can go ahead and rearrange them. So I want the calculation to be the last thing. Then just to go ahead and show you the next one. So this will be a conditional logic, but first let's solve the problem. So we'll come back to this form. Let me just give it some color. So I already have a class name I created called D J form. And all that just is that it just gives it a dark color. Let me show you. So under the fields, I just added a label typography and made it a black color and gave it my base text font size because it comes with a very tiny font. I want it to be big. So I just changed the font size. Then I changed the border to be thicker. I don't like all of those very gray borders. I want it to be thick enough for users to see, but that's not the main point in this video. The main point here is that we are focusing on this form and we want to add the calculations. So now let's go ahead and see. So the first one is a number field. Then what I'll do is come on that general and I'll give it an ID. So let's say maybe we'll call it um, users. Then I'll give it a label. The label should be maybe expected number of participants. We 
Because let's face it, sometimes you might expect 500 people to come and only 75 come, but at least you are paying for that 500 people space because we do that also when you're booking for a wedding venue. They will ask you, how many people are you expecting to come? You know fully well that not everybody is going to show up, but at least a good number will show up. Then for that one, you can now put a default value. This value here means the default. So let's say a default value of maybe 10. So at the start of the form, you see 10 to start it. Then what else? We don't need any autocomplete. It's a numeric input. So all of those are set up properly. The next field, so let me just rename it. So call this one participants. The next one now is we want to see what is the base price, which is $100. So I'll go to this hidden one and say base price. And that's the same name I'll put here base underscore price. Or you can call it unit price. So for that one, it was given us a hundred dollars. So I can come to the value here and say 100. Just make sure it's a number and not like adding the dollar sign into this because you can cause problems when doing the calculation. So just make it a number. So 100. Then we'll go to the next one, which is the minimum number of participants, which is 50 in this case. So see minimum users. For the ID, because this is the ID we're going to be using in the calculation. So that's why I like to name it easy names for me to remember. So this I'll say min for main underscore users. Okay. Then the last one is the surcharge. So surcharge. Because they are hidden fields, we don't need to add any kind of label. That's why you don't see anything like label here because they're just going to be hidden. For this, I'll call it surcharge. So surcharge. And I'll give it a value of a thousand dollars. Okay, so I think we're all set. Minimum users. I haven't added the value. The value was 50 participants. So 50. So now we have all our numbers set up. The last thing is the calculation. So there are two ways you can do it. You can make the calculation to be visible for everybody to see, or you can make it hidden and then use the dynamic tag. I'll show you how to do both of them now. So first, let's give it a label because we want it to be visible. So I'll say this will be total. Then you come under the bottom and you see formula. That is the important bit here. When you use the calculation field, you get this formula. And as you can see from the example in the placeholder, I like to do it that same way. First, I'll declare some variables. Then I'll use those variables in my calculation. You don't need to do that, but it just makes everything cleaner. So first, I'll declare all my variables. Since I've already labeled them here, that's what I'm going to use as well. So I'll say base underscore price equal to. And if you see, let me cut this. All you have to do is put the curly brace and then the ID. Let me show you where you get the ID. So we'll go to the first one, which is base price. This is the custom ID. That's why I named it some easy name for me to remember. So base underscore price. Come back to the calculation to the formula. So I'll say base underscore price equal to open the curly brace, paste it in, close the curly brace. Basically, it will be similar names. But just so that I don't need to be writing the curly brace every time, I just have to write the name as a variable. The second one is the number of participants. So I'll call it users is equal to, I think the ID was users as well. Let's confirm. So I'll come to participants. The ID was users, yes. Then base price. The next one is main users. Let me copy that. Come to the calculation. I'm just declaring variables for now equal to this one will be in the curly brace. And then I'll close it. And the last 
thing is the surcharge. It is called surcharge as well. So copy, calculations, and I'll paste that here. So surcharge equal to the variable surcharge. So now that we've defined all of these, let me now do the actual calculation. So let's zoom in a little bit. So what we are going to do here now is a bit of conditional logic. Before we do that, let me just show you how calculations work. So if you want to do a calculation of, say, the base price multiplied by the number of users, all you say is, now that I've declared the variable, so you say users, multiplication is this asterisk symbol and base underscore price. If I save this and preview it on the front end, you see what happens. So preview. As you can see, the total is 1000. And that's because we're having the number of users multiplied by the base price. The number of users in this case was 10. The base price was 100. So if you multiply them, that'll give you a thousand. So that's how simple it is to do regular calculations. But now when you want to add conditional logic into the calculation, all you have to do is come back. Then we have these. So what I'll say now is the condition we are trying to meet is that if the number of participants is less than 50, so the number of users, if that number of users is less than 50, we're using the ternary notation here. So I'll put the question mark. So first you say, this is the condition, put the question mark, and then if the condition is true, this will be shown, then we'll put a colon and we'll put what happens if the condition is false. So what happens when the condition is true? We want that the base price will be multiplied by the number of users plus the surcharge. So let's go and add that condition. I'll put the multiplication in brackets. So the number of users multiplied by the base underscore price, then plus the surcharge. But then once we get from 50 and above, we just want the number of users multiplied by the base underscore price. So save this and we'll preview it on the front end. So let me go to the front end. Let me close the other one. So now let's go down. At the moment we have 10. So 10 multiplied by the base price, which is 100, will give us a thousand. And then we add a surcharge, which is another thousand. That gives us 2000. Let's see, compared to the other one, if I put 10, see 2000. So it's working. If I put 15 now, 2,500, correct. Then if I put 50, we get 5,000. So the condition is working. So that is the first step. Now let's go over to the second step, which is now we want to add this. Let me show you the example. This discount applied when the value gets over that 50 number of users. That's where we come to the conditional logic within the text. So all we have to do is just search for conditional wrapper. You click on that. So within this conditional wrapper now, we can now say that let's add an extra text widget. So now we can add a regular text widget, so basic text. And I'll set it to be a paragraph text. And I'll just write discount applied. So we want this text to only show up when the number of users is now above the 50. So that's 50 and above. So you come back to this conditional wrapper. We can leave the tag name as div. Then the conditions will add a condition, add a new item. And we just want to say the form field. If this number of participants, so come, and get the ID here, which is users. So copy that, 
come back to our condition conditions and simply drop that condition here so if this users is greater than or equal to which is the number here is this case is 50 that type is number so let's save it and now when we come back to the front end refresh it so it should work now so we have 10 users nothing is showing but the moment we have like 100 users discount gets applied and then it shows up here so that's how easy it is to create this conditional logic with your calculations the only thing left is for you to style it so you add maybe a block and do some nice styling the second example introduces some dynamic data so we have an options page then we have repeater fields we have some conditional logic and we have some extra functionality so that whenever three or more checkboxes are ticked then we have an action happening so if you have a better solution for this example i would love to hear it so let me know in the comments i'm just going to show you how i approached it and after that I will also mention some accessibility issues that I found, which some of them can be solved. And the other ones, I'm hoping that Daniel will look into them and solve those problems. So now let's jump right back into it. This is the form we're working with for the second example. So let me go ahead and show you the back end. So we have this whole options page created using ACPT. You can use ACF, you can use Jet Engine or whatever you want you have. But I'm using ACPT in this example. And all we have is this is one field for the number of items for the discount. Then we have the rates of the discount, so that's 10%. Then we have the vehicle type. All of them just has the car model and the base price. We have for the main services, all of these are just repeater fields. So it's easy to manage from the back end. So now that we have all of these all set up, now let me go ahead and start showing you how i created the form i'll just show you a brief example then we'll now go to the actual form i created and i'll show you what were the changes i added so now let's go ahead and just create a new form so this is what we're working with first thing we need to do is drop in our pro forms so pro form so while we're here the one thing that i would have really loved is for the bricksforge terminal so Control alt t to be able to add these elements for me so, but unfortunately i don't see an option because if i try to say maybe select field or the number field nothing shows up so currently i'm not sure how we can incorporate the terminal with the brickforge pro forms if you know let me know in the comments so let me escape that and we'll continue so what we want here is just a select field then we want some checkboxes and some other checkboxes so that's just select field and checkbox fields so let's come back i'll delete all of these so now we're starting with a blank pro form i'll click on the plus icon and the first thing we need is the select field let me click on it that will give us a select and an option because everything is nestable that is the one powerful thing about the pro forms the next thing we need now is the checkbox so check for the checkboxes we want to use the checkbox wrapper because the checkbox goes into the checkbox wrapper so i'll click on that i'll put two of them now let me go ahead and start naming them so the first one is the vehicle type so let me just copy that name come back to this the vehicle type the second thing is the main services paste that there and then we have the premium add-ons i also paste that there so we have everything set up in the back end so these are the basic fields we need then 
just to make some styling options i'll go into the pro forms and just add the class name b dj form just to make everything bold enough for everybody to see now we have the basic input fields now let's go ahead and start adding in all the information for these input fields so for the vehicle type what you want to do is okay come to the general we want to now add a label because the label here is vehicle type so let me just copy that again so the things you need to do here are add some custom id because that's what we'll be using in our calculations so remember to add that so i'll call that maybe car type car underscore type so that is short then the label i'll see vehicle type for the value we can add things like a placeholder as well if you want so placeholder maybe i'll say what did i write there i'll say select your car model exterior wash included i believe that's what i wrote in base price although when i was doing the example i didn't use this placeholder because i didn't want a screen reader user to see this as an option let me go ahead and preview it on the front end you can see this is the placeholder but right now we can still click on the placeholder what i want usually is that the placeholder only shows up at the first instant but a screen reader user will not have to start seeing that as part of the options i'll show that later the next thing we need to do now is come under the option then we need to add in the data for the option you can do it in two ways in fact you can do it in three ways you can come back to this vehicle type if you scroll all the way to the bottom you see you can add in either static data or you add in a json data so those are two ways or you can come to the options itself and you start adding them as nested elements so you can duplicate these and you keep getting some elements which will now be part of the select so let me just show you an example so maybe suv second one will be maybe truck so let's save this and we preview on the front end refresh as you can see we now get the suv and the truck but we can still also select this select your car model okay but what if we want to now make all of this dynamic because right now these are static things you have to start adding all of these options multiple times in the builder which is very annoying you may not want to give your users access to the editor so this is one way you can do it you create everything in an options page and then just pull in that data dynamically into your form in the editor let's go ahead and see how easy it is so back here on the form let me go ahead and now delete this option we don't need it or we need just one option there or you can even have more so you can have some static data and some dynamic data all combined together that is how powerful it is but now on this option you come over to query loop click activate then i want to choose the query and what i want to choose is one of these sources if you have like acf or acpt and they are repeater fields you see them coming up in here so in this case what i'm trying to query is the vehicle type so click on that then we we'll close out of this next thing we need to do now is add what we want the label and the value to be as well as the calculated value so in this case the label should now be the let me search for model okay so that's it car model then the value what do i call it base price okay so I just need to search for base price let me also use that as the calculated value so calculated value base price or you may want to use the value itself because it's the value that will be shown up when you are submitting the form and they are sending an email so you may not want to use the price as the value you may want to use the same label 
to be the value. So save that. So rather than just going on the back end and just saying $25 or £25, you want to be able to see the actual thing you are submitting. So that, that might be what you want here, value. But then within the calculated value, this is what we're going to be using for all of our calculations. So that's where we use this base price there. So let me save this and see if it worked. So come back to my form, refresh it. And you can see if I click on this, now we have sedan, SUV and truck. You may want to add some visible text to improve the whole user experience. So we want to add like base price. Let me show you. So come to the example. You can see I put base to be 25 pounds. So all you have to do now is that's why we're all using dynamic data. So I'll come and copy the dynamic tag for the price. Come back to the label because that's what is going to be the visible text. Go to the end space, open a bracket, say base space, put the pound sign and then I paste the dynamic tag and then I close the bracket, save it. Now let's go ahead and see if it worked. Refresh. Okay, open this up. Now you can see sedan base 25 pounds, SUV base 30 pounds and so on, which is there in the back end, sedan 25, SUV 30, truck 35. So now you can handle everything from the back end and it just goes into the editor and straight away into the front end. So that's for the first one for the select field. Next one is the other field, which is the main service. So let me just call that main. Then the label will be main service. And what else do we need? We don't need any other thing here. You can add the data statically, but we want to be better. We want it to be more dynamic. So come to the checkbox which is inside of the checkbox wrapper. Now within this one, we put the same thing again. So query loop, yes, the query. This time we're trying to query, let's see the example, the main service, and that was called, let's see, called main service as well on the back end. So I'll do the same thing, the type I'm looking for main service so that's the second one then exit out of the query and now the label and the value so the label would be let's look at the example is service name then this is a label because i wanted to be adding all of these values you don't really need this label we can still use the same thing name then just add a plus sign so let's just do this so we just need the name and the price so I'll come back and say the label will be the service name. So let me say name and see what comes up. So car wash main service. Okay. Service name. Copy that. Put it in the value as well. Then in the calculated value, we don't want the name. We want the price. So price. And we're looking for the service price. Okay. Copy that. This is really annoying thing that I don't really like about ACPT is that their names are so long. See the length of the name because it starts with ACPT. Then we have the group name. Then we have the Metabox name before you get into the actual name of the repeater field. Then the name of the, so the whole thing is so long that it gets hard to keep up. But on the other hand, it is quite powerful. So that's why I still like using ACPT, but I wished that the whole naming convention to be a bit easier to use. So I'll come back to this label and I'll put space, open the bracket and put plus the pound sign and then paste the dynamic tag for the price and close the bracket. Okay, save it. So you can see now interior cleaning plus 15 pounds. So it's working. Next one is the premium add-on. 
So we'll do the same thing. So let's see this one. I'll call it maybe premium. So premium label will be premium add-ons. Then the checkbox, we do the same thing. Query loop, query will be the last one, which is the premium add-on escape from the query, the label. Let's look at the example. It's called add-on name and then add-on price. So add-on the name, the value will be the same thing. And then the calculation value will be the price. So add on price. Okay. Let me copy this. The same way we did it here, where we add plus five pounds so that people can see it visually what the price is actually going to be added. So we can do that as well. So come to the label, to the end, bracket plus pound sign, and then the actual tag, and then I'll close the bracket and save it. And now we have everything all set up. So the first settings are all done. Now we've done the first settings. One thing to remember when you're using the calculation logic is that the calculation value should not be a zero because I've found out that sometimes when you have a zero as the value, it tends to not work out properly. I think there's a bug because that zero in the calculated value field gets converted to a blank space. And then when you use that value in your calculations, it just doesn't work. So pay attention whenever you're using the calculation field, make sure that your calculation value should either be like 0, 0.00 or something above zero. So keep that in mind. The next thing we need to do now is start the actual calculations. So the first calculation for the discount. So let's go back. And as you can see right now, it says the discount should be 10% of the three premium add-ons. Now let's go ahead and see that. But before we do that, let's just even do the total price first. So I'll do the total price, which just adds everything up. So let me come back and I'll create a calculation field. And maybe I should even wrap it in a block first so that everything will be in one block. Then within that block, I want a calculation field. So all this calculation is doing is just summing up all of the different values. So let me just say this will be total. And the total is just going to be, the first one is the base value. So I'll say base equal to I believe it was called car type for the ID. Let's go back and check it out. So the vehicle type, yes, I called it car type. Let's copy that. I like always declaring variables first. So that's car type here. Let's make sure, paste it. Make sure it's in the curly brace. And then at the end, put a semicolon to break. Then we can go to the next line. And this time we we'll say we've declared the first one, which is the base price. The second one is the main service, which is an add-on. So I'll say main equal to, and I believe I called it main. Put the semicolon. And the last one is the premium add-on. So premium equal to premium. Let's confirm. So the premium add-ons. The custom ID is premium main service. The custom ID is main. So we have everything. Come back to the calculation. So now we have declared all of the variables. Remember to put the semicolon. Now we just have to declare what the output is. So the output should be the base plus the main plus the premium. We'll change this calculation later, but this is the first logic. Let's now go ahead and preview it on the front end and see if everything works. Okay. So right now nothing is selected. So let me select base 25 plus 15, that's 40, plus 20, that's 60. 
Let's now go to the next one, say plus 5, 65. This will now give it 90. And everything is working perfectly. So our calculation is working. So now the next thing we need to do now is the second problem is when we have three items, right now it doesn't do that condition. We want a condition that when we have three or more items, we should apply a discount of 10%. So how do we do that? This is where we need a bit of JavaScript. Ideally, I hope somebody can tell me in the comments how to do it using the events in the Bricksforge panel. But for now, I'm not that proficient in the panel. So I'm just going to use regular JavaScript. So what is going to happen is that we're just going to be adding an event listener to this field. So we'll look for the name of this field. Then we'll attach an event listener to it that when three or more of the checkboxes are checked, then it should apply a value which would add as a hidden value. So first, let me now create that hidden value which we'll be using in our whole calculation. So I'll come back and I'll drop in a hidden field. So before all of these, let me create another logic. So I'll put a hidden field first. So that hidden field, or let me put two hidden fields. The first one is the number of items. So number of premium items. And the second one is the rate, so discount rate. So the number of premium items, let's go ahead and just pull it in now. That will be, let's just say, number. We don't really need this, but I just want to show you that everything can be dynamic. So the value, will now be from our dynamic data, which is here at the beginning. You see the items amount, discount items amount. So I'll say discount items amount. That's the value, which is three. The second one is the rate. So I'll just put this one as discount or discount percent then i put the value as the discount rate maybe i will just name it rate i don't know we'll see save it so now we have these two values being imported successfully we can now use these values what i'm going to do now is add a javascript that basically listens to these premium add-ons and when the premium add-ons go to three or above, then it should apply this rate to be the actual 10%. Otherwise, it should change the rate to be a zero. But first, let's just look at the calculation and see if this calculation works with this rate. So this discount percent, let me copy it. Then I'm going to add another calculation field. What that is just going to do is do the calculation for the discount. When we get our discount, that is what is being shown. Let me show you an example. So the discount here is based on one calculation field that is somewhere hidden. Then the next idea is once we've gotten this discount, this will now be subtracted from the total amount that is also hidden. And then the output is what we see here. So let's go back. And then we add in those values. So we add the calculation field. So this one is going to be the discount. This is total. So for the discount, let me call that discount. So all this is now checking for is that we are looking at the percentage. I'm multiplying it by the total number of premium add-ons. So I'll just say add-ons first or premium. I think that's the name of the using. So premium should be equal to the premium. And we now want this discount rate. So I called it discount percent. I should have called it rate. 
then discount or let me just write rate now rate equal to the discount percent remember to put them in curly brace because this is a form field value and column so now what i'm just going to say is the premium multiplied by the rate but the rate is 15 we want it in percentage so we would have to do 15 divided by 100 so say premium multiplied by the rate divided by 100. For the last one, which is the output, we don't need to put a semicolon. So save this. Let's see if it's working. So come to the front end, refresh. So right now it's just going to be constantly calculating the premium add-ons. So right now, 10% of five pounds is 0 0.5. The next one, two, and so on. So it's always going to be calculating it. So now we just want to now make that actual value for the rate to be dynamic. That is where we add some JavaScript, which I'll link to in the description. So you can go ahead and check it out later. Like I said, if you have a better solution, let me know in the comments, because I'm also trying to learn how to use the events in the Bridgeforge panel. So let me just go ahead and copy the JavaScript and then I'll paste it. And then I'll explain what the JavaScript is doing. So I'll come back to the example. Then... I'll go to the JavaScript, which is a code element. And this is the JavaScript. So let me just copy everything, go to C. Then come back to our test, go to the bottom of the page and then use the code element. And we delete all of this, put the JavaScript here, paste, and let's see. We want it to execute. We want to pass dynamic data and want to suppress PHP errors. And I don't need any wrapper. So everything like this. So now let me explain the JavaScript. Save it. So what I'm doing is right now, let me explain this a bit better. So let me make the static values first. So this is the threshold, which is basically how many select fields do I want to check? So in this case, I wanted to check three select fields. Then the next thing we're looking at is the rate. So the discount rate is 10%, so 10. And then it's going to be alternating between these two values. So it's going to either be 10 or zero. Let me take you with this. Okay, so now everything is cleared. So we have three. 10 and zero. The last thing here is what we have tried to get because I put the ID as premium. Let me show you where this ID is coming from. So save it. We'll change everything back soon. But let me go to the front end, right click on this and inspect. So I was looking for one identifiable field that can be used to identify the whole of these checkboxes. And then I realized that they add this data custom ID equal to premium. And that is based on whatever ID you set in the builder. So when you come to this premium add-ons and you set the ID here equal to premium, it creates that on the front end, the data custom ID. So I basically targeted this data custom ID and that's what I use as the event listener. So it listens out for the checkboxes within this data custom ID equal to premium. So if we go back to the builder, let me go back to the code. And that is the first one. The second one is the selector for the discount. In this case, I call it discount percentage. Let me just rename it to rate and save. Then come back to this discount rate rather than discount percentage or quality rate. So that's easier than the, I believe under the discount, call that rate as well. So rate and save. So if everything is working, that should now make the whole code work. So let's refresh this page and let me close it and see. So right now, 40, 65, and you see, 
it changes to 8.5. That 8.5 is basically 20 plus. Let's do something simpler. So let's add this as well. So that is 15 plus 25 is 40 plus 40 is 80. 80 plus 20 is 100. Then 10% of 100 is 10. So that's why we get this value. The only thing left here is that right now it's working, but let me select a car, 25, okay. But this is not being applied into the calculation. So now we need to remember to apply the discount into the total calculation. So then I come back. Now I'll go to the total. And this time I'll add the last variable, which is the discount. So discount is equal to, I believe I named it discount. Let's see, copy this, go to the total, and open and close the curly brace, paste it in there, put the semicolon. This time now, I'll now subtract the discount from everything, save it, and we go back to the front end, refresh, and when we start adding all of these add ons, see. The moment we add three elements, it gives us this. If I remove the third element, it goes back to zero. Put it to three, it gives us that number four, which is basically five plus 15 is 20, 20 plus 20 is 40, 10% 10 of 40 is four pounds. So that's it. We've gotten our values now. So the first one is four, second one is 36, which is basically 40 minus four. Yeah, if we add an extra value here for the wax treatment 20, that is not affecting this premium calculation. It's only affecting the total calculation. So now that we've gotten all of these values, the next thing we need to do is to start making them pretty. So we start adding our conditional logic so that the discount code is only showing up when we actually get that discount value applied. And the total value is also showing up in some styled way then like i said we we'll now go into talking about the accessibility so let's go back in so now based on the example this element is only showing up when the value is applied so what we're doing here is that once that value changes from zero for the rate because we're using that javascript to change the rate so when so when the rate changes from zero to the 15 percent then this discount should show up because that's when the calculation is kicking in. Otherwise, it should hide it. The second one is the total. So let's go back to our page. So rather than using this calculation field as our output, I would rather that we use a separate field, which is a text field, so that we can style that the way we want. So for the discount, what you want to do now is come down to the bottom and see only remote so that basically hides it from the page then we're going to be using this label so let me remove this label we don't need it we just need the custom id copy that then i'll come and create a wrapper so conditional wrapper then i'll add some text inside so text field And within the text field, I just want to see the base or discount applied. For now, I'm just going to use a static value just to show you that it's actually working. So come back to the conditional wrapper. Then the condition, add a condition, add item. And the condition we want is that this should only show up when the discount rate is greater than zero or better still we can just say is equal to the value that we've set up either one is fine so i'll come to the item and i'll choose form field then the field is going to be the label which is discount rate here so rate then the value we want it to be is greater than or equal to i'll choose the dynamic tag and I'll choose that option, which is discount rate. 
then the data type I'll make it to be a number. So save it. Let's go ahead and open it in a new tab. Let me close that one and see now. Okay. So now that value is hidden. Let's see if it works. So I'll click on one, two, and then the third item. And see discount applied gets shown. So if there are four, five, it shows. But the moment it goes below three, it disappears. So the job is done. It's working. We can now make that value to be dynamic. So let's come see the example. You see, it shows the discount price here within this value. So how can we do it to add the discount within a text field? Simple. Let's come back to the form. Come back to our text field. Let me just look at what the text says. So discount. Copy. Just paste it there and add the pound sign. And the next thing is to add the actual value. That is where it comes up with the dynamic tags from Bricksforge. Make sure you have dynamic tags activated in your Bricksforge ProForm settings. What that gives you is now you come to the tag. If you go down to the bottom to where you get Bricksforge, what you get now is two very important things. First, is the form live value and form calculation. Those two are very, very useful for so many cases. Now let's go ahead and just put the live value and we just put column and then we set the ID of where we want to get the live value from. So the ID in this case would be for the discount. So just come to the discount, copy that ID, basic text, and I'll just paste it there and see if it works. So save it. Then we we'll go ahead and preview it on the front end. Let me close this. Okay, so now let's see if it works. So one, two, three. This can apply this 8.5. Let's see if it is true. So 20, 40. That is 85 and that will be 8.5. So correct. And yeah, that is how we can get this value to show up. We do the same logic for the total field. So come back to the logic, then the total. I will go ahead and hide it. So come down to the bottom, say we don't want it to be shown. So only remote. Then I'll copy the ID total and I'll do the same thing here. Let me just duplicate this. Oh no, I don't need the conditional logic. I just need the basic text, duplicate, bring it out. So after the total and this time I just put a span tag here. So span total column slash span just showing you that it's working. So it's the same thing, the live value. And this time we just want the total to show up, save, come to the front end, refresh. And that one is gone. So all we have is total is zero. If I add paint, total is 40, 45. We get the discount applied six pounds and then 54 pounds in total. And everything just works out well. And yeah, that's how we can go through all of these forms and do the calculations as well as the conditional logic. The last thing, like I said, I will mention briefly is about accessibility and some things that I've been researching recently that I figured out that exist for forms, which I didn't even know existed for forms before. Now let's take a look. So here we are back on the back end. Now let's go ahead and inspect the HTML and I'll point out some of the things that I think should be changed. Please do let me know in the comments what are your thoughts and what other additional things that they should do for the forms. So I'll go ahead and right click, inspect. And the one thing I noticed is for group field, so things like your checkboxes, your radio buttons and things like that, what they're doing is they're adding so many information that are not needed. So what do I mean? So let me 
open it, first of all, they're using a UL LI tag, which I don't think is necessary because we're already using the input. The ideal thing to use here is the fill set and legend because see what's happening now. They have the UL okay, because I didn't put a label. Let me go ahead and put a label so you can see what it means. So come back to the form and this is main service. I disabled the label, so let's say show label, save it. So now we have our label. See what happens if I right click and go ahead to inspect again. It is putting a label without a for attribute. So this label is just a dangling element that is not really attached to anything. So ideally what we should do here is use the latest standard. Let me go ahead and see if I can edit it or let me open this page in Firefox and in Firefox, let me go ahead and inspect it again. Inspect. Okay, so we have that form element. What I want to do is show you what it should ideally be. So I would right click and then say to edit the HTML. So edit as HTML. So we start. So for this element, which is just basically the main, what we need to do is use field set and I'll close that up. Let's see the bottom. The bottom here should be field set. So that's closed up. Let's go back to the beginning. So we have this field set. The next thing is this label that I just dangling here. It should ideally be a legend. So legend and legend. So now we don't need to do any other thing because it's already semantic. The next thing is, I notice this UL, this whole UL LI structure is not needed. We already have that field set or legend, which is describing everything. So now with this UL, I just make it a div, the LI, make it a div as well. Or in fact, you can delete the entire UL, which is this option wrapper. It doesn't really make much sense anymore, but let's just leave it there. So we'll go through everything and remove these allies, make them back to divs. Any ally we see, div. 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 And the last one is a div. The ul also should be a div. So that's the first thing done. The next thing we need to start doing is removing some of this information that are here. All of this area, whatever, is not needed because we already have visible text. There's no need to start adding area because I noticed when I was listening to some of these ones using a screen reader, it was announcing some of the labels twice because of all of these things that were added, which are not necessary. So starting from the area label to the end, so area label, this role equal to checkbox and area checked equal to false. It should be all be deleted. I also noticed that the area check is not even being changed. So it's showing false. Even when I set it to true, it will still keep showing false. So that means it's not even acting the way it should act. So all of those things should be removed. The only thing we need for an input type is to say the input. So that's where we start here. Input type equal to checkbox. That is the main thing we need. In addition to that, we need the name and the value. So name, ID, value, then type. We don't need all of these role and area label and everything like that. So I'll delete it. Then the label can be there because you have the label for that form field. Okay. Same thing for the next one. The same problem. So the area label, the role, and the area checked. All of that is not needed. For the third one, we have the same problem. So area label all up to the area checked should be removed. And this is how the element should be. So let me go out of this and we get it this way. So this is more semantic and don't worry about this border. It is pretty easy to remove. Let me just come to the style editor plus all you do is say field set. 
border and then zero or none, anything, the border is gone. So it's not like it's a big deal. It comes back to the same design. The added advantage here is that now all of these checkboxes are actually linked back to this main service. If you use a screen reader, let's see if I can open up the dev tools under accessibility and we we'll see the accessible name for it. So let's go to the main, within the main generic form. And then you can see it's, it now has this name group. It gives the group name. So you see main service grouping. Then it will start telling you all the labels. So the label is main service. So because we use that field set and legend, it gives the proper label, which is attached to the group and we have all of our checkboxes. So these are checkboxes with their labels. Everything just works perfectly. So all of those area information and role and all of that, sometimes I've noticed that a lot of users, we tend to put so much area information on all of these things when they are not needed. The semantic HTML triumphs over all of this area thing. The only time you start thinking of area it's mostly when you have interactions. So like JavaScript is being involved, then you start to consider that there must be some area information there. Otherwise, try to find the semantic HTML equivalent and use that. So let's continue. The other thing that I have learned recently is that you see when you have this discount applied, you want to be able to announce that discount to a screen reader user as well because we can see it visually when it is applied, but a screen reader user will not see this visually. So the way we apply it is that we put our paragraph text, which is a semantic HTML, then we wrap it in a div, and that div, we give it a role that makes it to be announced. So we can use like an alert role, which will now announce it compulsorily, or we can be more polite and use what we call the area live equal to polite. Let me show you what I did. So let me come to the example. You see this conditional wrapper, because every other thing is hidden. So I wrapped that conditional wrapper in a div or a block. The idea is that the actual block that holds the live content should not be hidden. So it should be outside of the hidden element. That's why I put it outside of the conditional wrapper. So that element, I simply went to the style tab and at the bottom, put attributes and area live equal to polite. So what happens is that whenever this changes to the content within the container happens, that now gets communicated to a screen reader user and it will read out the discount. So once the user selects three items, it will now tell them that the discount applied for the three items is four pounds. And the screen reader user will know, okay, yes, I have gotten a discount and you are including them in your whole process. They will appreciate you more for that. The other thing I found out recently is how to actually output this total price. There is a semantic HTML for total price, which I found out recently. And let me go ahead and inspect it and show you what it is. And just as the way it is, it is called output. So you simply use the HTML elements called output, and you do it the same way you have an input. So it has a label, which is the total price. And then the output is just the value that changes. And the calculation value, this is the right HTML for calculated value that you are going to show to a user. That will also get announced. It has a similar role like the alert. So whenever it changes, it announces to the screen reader user that there is a change. So what will happen is, let me exit this. As you click on all of these checkboxes, it would say like 20 plus 20 pounds. Then you say total price 101. So the user is following along. So as he's adding so many of those items to the check box, he's getting the announcement immediately that the total price is being increased to 101 pounds. And those are the improvements you can make. The other thing is, the same way we have this area live, we should also do with your error messages, which I'm, I'm not showing here because there's no error 
handling in this form but basically the error messages in your form should also have a way to describe them so that a screen reader user would know that that error message is there bricks and bricks forge they give you the error message the trouble is that that error message is not being like communicated along with the form there should be a way to communicate it using the area invalid plus the area described by so that element will be added and then the area described by will now make it be read when there is an error when you have that area invalid and all of that so so many of these things needs to be incorporated there are simple things that you can just add they're not like some magical things you can add i'll leave a link to where you can learn about them in the description so that you can go ahead and read them for yourself so yeah thanks for watching i hope you've enjoyed the video if you have please do let me know in the comments i like to hear your comments so that i know the video actually helped you and if you have any comments any kind of contributions any questions please do leave them in the comment section as well and please do leave a thumbs up and share the video with your friends and your family let them get the knowledge and we can all grow together thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next one bye